Hello YouTube! It's me, it's me, it's Michael B. Thank you so much for checking out the video. And in today's video, well, we got some stuff to talk about. Of course, Arcade 1-Ups 2-Player NBA Jam Deluxe has created quite a stir in the community. Fans are really down on Arcade 1-Up right now, especially what it looks like for the trajectory of the company. And many people, including myself, don't see a path forward, so what does that mean for Arcade 1UP and its fans going forward? On top of that, Godzilla fans and Stern Pinball fans can rejoice as Stern Pinball has announced a 70th anniversary Godzilla Stern Pinball, a new premium. We'll talk a little bit about that. And last but not least, I'm a big G.I. Joe fan and one of my most anticipated games of this year is the new Beat 'em Up coming out. Wrath of Cobra from G.I. Joe. There was a demo released last week. I planned on covering it and telling you guys my thoughts, but I won't be doing that anymore. And I'll tell you more about why and the other topics right after this. So that's right guys, we got a ton of stuff to talk about on today's video, but before we get into that, I'm going to say thank you so much everybody for checking out the video. Guys, I always appreciate your support. If this is your first time to the channel, you like what you see, go ahead, subscribe, click the bell for notification, all that YouTube jazz. So you guys remember, one of the happiest days of my life was when I finally got my Godzilla Premium Stern Pinball delivered to my home. This thing exceeded all my expectations. Of course, I had played it a bunch before I actually bought myself. I mean, it's a pretty big purchase, so you want to make sure you like it. Godzilla is everything that you could hope for in a pinball machine. It's great and very receptive for new pinball enthusiasts, and it creates it has a lot of challenge there for people that excel at pinball as well. All the different tricks and stuff like that. There's a reason it's long been regarded as the greatest pinball machine of all time according to Pinside. Now if you are a fan of Godzilla Stern Pinball, a new premium has been announced that's featuring an all black and white design with red accents featuring the history of Godzilla going back to the days when Godzilla first appeared in black and white. This new premium table is something that's special for collectors and Godzilla pinball enthusiasts alike. It features the same dynamic and great gameplay of the original premium pinball machine with the new color scheme and a lot of people are saying it looks absolutely beautiful. Now for those of you saying I've seen something like this before, one of Stern, in my opinion's other great amazing pinball machines they've released in the last little while of course is Elvira House of Horrors, a game that takes elements from all the previous Elvira pinball machines, adds it into this and just, I love this game. They've made an amazing game. They also did a special edition premium Blood Red Kiss edition that's very similar to the iconic Godzilla we're getting right now black and white features with red accents. Basically, it's the same concept done but to celebrate the 70th anniversary of Godzilla. So anyways guys, I think this is super cool. It looks beautiful. However, I don't really necessarily see the need of these black and white editions. If that's something you're in, you're a big either uh, Elvira or Godzilla collector and you have to have it, I understand. But for me personally, I, I, I prefer the original. I think the original is perfect. I don't know why you would need a black and white edition, but you can tell me out there, what do you prefer? Do you like the original editions of these games, or do you prefer the black and white? Next up, easily my most anticipated game of 2024, believe it or not, is this classic beat-em-up style G.I. Joe game coming out, The Wrath of Cobra. I'm so excited for this. This looks like this is going to be everything G.I. Joe fans have been wanting for a very long time, featuring classic cartoon characters, no futuristic stuff involved here, just all the great iconic nostalgia we remember from G.I. Joe in the 80s. I do have to say at this point, I understand that I have a bias here. I've been buying, collecting, following G.I. Joe ever since I was a wee lad, starting in the 80s with the original, uh, well, 
3.75 inch toys, not the original original, but I fell in love with this version of G.I. Joe. I watched all the cartoons, I collected the comic books. As an adult, I'm still collecting these re-released toys, still buying the comic books. I love G.I. Joe, so maybe that's why I'm so excited about this and why I'm so excited to cover the game. Now, a demo of this game was released last week. I went out and downloaded it on Steam. I added it to my library. My plan was to actually play it for you guys live on stream this Wednesday night, give my first impressions, and tell you how I felt. Unfortunately, it looks like it was a limited time demo, and the time's up. So, unfortunately... I'm not going to be able to cover the demo for G.I. Joe The Wrath of Cobra. I apologize for anybody that was looking for my opinion on it. We're going to have to wait until the actual game release, it looks like. Now, luckily, there is a pile of footage out there of people that were smart enough not to wait until the demo was a couple days old to go out and actually check it out. So go out and search on YouTube. I know my buddy Cool Toy also did. He had early access to this and did a demo a while back. If you guys were smarter than me and you went out and downloaded the demo, leave some comments in the description below. What do you think of this G.I. Joe Wrath of Cobra beat-em-up style game that's going to be coming out in the next little while? Hopefully, I eventually get to play it. I, I've never heard of a demo uh, basically being taken on the store as some kind of limited time demo, but that seems to be exactly what happened here. And unfortunately, no Game & Watch with Michael B. tonight on the G.I. Joe Wrath of Cobra demo. And last but not least, we gotta talk about Arcade 1UP. I mean, it's a Michael B. video. I'm an Arcade 1UP YouTuber, right? That's what you guys come to check out. Well, Arcade 1UP, is doing some stuff that, obviously, I've been pretty vocal about, I'm disappointed in. Arcade 1UP recently announced their NBA Jam 2-player deluxe cabinet, and while the 2-player control deck, really good idea, a lot of people have been asking for it, it features a new sleek design that moves the cabinet further away from an arcade recreation. Now, I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail here. I've already made a bunch of videos about my displeasure with this, and... Other content creators have also voiced their displeasure as well with Arcade 1UP's new traje trajectory or what appears to be the new version of their deluxe three-quarter form factor. According to the community, 60 to 70 percent don't like this version and don't plan on buying Arcade 1UP cabinets with this form factor going forward. To top it off, in the bad timing category for Arcade 1UP, Popular YouTube personality RGT85 made a video stating that Arcade 1UP is dead. Well, at least dead to him as, as the company has changed to their new trajectory, not just in the form factor, but in their business model, he has seemingly lost all interest in the company. Now, I was lucky enough to have my buddy RGT85 on stream this past Monday. Well, at least you assume it's him. It is kind of pixelated, so we never can tell. Maybe I had a stand-in, but RGT85 was there to explain his position, and we both talked about our displeasure and how the company has kind of changed and how a lot of the wonderment and excitement about the product and the excitement of what's coming next and how good it will be is kind of gone from this brand. Friend, the feeling for longtime collectors has kind of left in a sense. Well, with that information out there and seeing how the community's reacting to Arcade 1UP, especially over the course of the last two years, there seems to be a lot of negativity from long term fans. People are tired and exhausted with what Arcade 1UP is putting out and tired of waiting for something new. So, what are the options for these people that have been longtime Arcade 1UP fans, but not fans because of the brand or because they can play the games? People that were looking for arcade cabinet recreations they could put in their home, build these tiny arcades, what's the next option? People would say easily get a Raspberry Pi, get a Multicade, collect real arcades. Obviously, that's not what these people were looking for and not what attracted them to Arcade 1UP. So what do we do going forward if we want to continue adding arcade recreations to our home arcades? Of course, the first option is suck it up buy it and see if it's any good, see if you like it. But 
I would caution that's not necessarily the best thing to do. It's so easy to just let these companies get away with giving us inferior products or stuff we don't like, letting them take shortcuts, get rid of some of the wood, and come out with something that's more cost effective for them, and we just give it and buy it anyways. What I'm saying here is something that should always be said. If you're not happy with something, if you're not 100% happy with something and you want to let the company know, speak with your wallet. Don't buy it. There's no other way to discontinue <laughs> this abomination of a form factor unless you don't buy it. And rk one up says, who sales results are in, people don't like it, maybe we shouldn't continue this. Now, for those of you who do like it, go ahead, buy it. I, I don't really care. You, you know, it's up to you if you're impacted the same way I am and others are by the change in form factor. But if you don't like it and you're not happy with the new form factor, just don't buy it. Show these companies with your wallet. Of course, another option is to do what the community have long always done, and that's mod these cabinets to get the games that they've wanted. It's been a long-standing tradition with Arcade 1UP, going back to the first wave of cabinets, and especially when they were selling them off, for $50 some Walmarts, people would buy them just to mod them. This is a video from my buddy 19K Fox. He made a deluxe Marvel vs. Capcom 2 cabinet, so of course, that is always an option. And the great thing about modding these cabinets is there's so many third-party companies out there, vendors like Zabo's Arcade, uh, you know, all these other companies that are making artwork packages, making marquees, even uh, doing controller upgrades like our buddy Glenn Planamento, Glenn's Retro Show, coming out with better trackballs, better spinners, uh, better Star Wars flight yokes. So we get to support these smaller third-party companies and maybe make some of the cabinets we always wanted but not everybody is a modder as you guys know I, I, I'm very hesitant to do anything I've done some stuff in the past put in some of Glenn's excellent products done some screen upgrades but in terms of changing the cabinet like either the form factor or the art that's something that's always just been outside of me so what do we do going forward and like what am I going to do well if you watch my show with Sean this past Monday, you would know that I'm kind of losing patience with Arcade 1UP. I don't have a lot of faith that they're going to do a lot of stuff going forward. I think they've already got a product line right now. They're going to continue to release these products. So maybe there's not a lot coming up in the future that will interest me and enable me to add new games to my home arcade. But let me be clear, that doesn't mean I'm done with Arcade 1UP. My expectations are just really low. Uh, I'm still going to be here on YouTube. I'll cover what they do. But in terms of my personal purchasing preferences and stuff like that, if this new form factor exists, even if they do come out with new games, I, I again, I'm going to speak with my wallet. And I'm not going to buy it. But... I'm going to keep hope alive because I really like the product. I've always liked the product. I like the idea of an arcade recreation. So I'm going to keep hope alive that eventually they'll come to their senses and maybe go back and make products that are in fact home arcade recreations and if they do come out with something cool like that 720 we saw maybe I'll add a new arcade one up product to my arcade. Of course. I'm also keeping an eye open on what other companies are doing. Of course, New Wave Toys just announced their Golden Tee with the GRS control deck for Golden Tee. This is something that, for me with the game, I'm not personally interested in Golden Tee specifically, but I'm excited to see what they come out with in the future. Other games, more nostalgic to me, and ones I'm excited about, like some of those classic 80s titles. And of course, as we now know, and it's famously been stated, both Glenn and New Wave Toys have let the genie out of the bottle, literally, and told us they are coming out with a full-scale or almost full-scale replica arcade that would look perfect and look amazing in your home arcade, especially with the quality of what New Wave Toys does with your arcade one-ups, and that's the kind of stuff I'm really interested in. Hopefully they're good. I'm going to keep my eye on that. Also on other companies like Unico, who previously released an MBSX. Maybe there's a future with Unico also releasing recreation home arcades that would work well 
in an arcade filled with arcade one-ups that are also arcade recreations. As for me, again, like what am I gonna do on YouTube? I I'm always gonna do what I've done on YouTube. I I'm obviously a big fan of home arcade. I talk about this stuff, so I'm still gonna do what I did today. I'm gonna talk about pinball. I I'm gonna talk about Act Games, Evercade, Unico. Am I gonna talk about arcade one-up? Yeah, I'll still talk about them, but when they do something, I mean, a lot of the wonderment is kind of gone for me, so it's very unlikely that I'll do videos about speculation, about what could be coming, or anything like that, and I'm going to focus more on what are they doing, and if I like it, that's it. So, you know, my channel will change a little bit because so much of what I've done has been Arcade 1-Up in the past. It's just going forward, there's not really a lot to talk about until they give us something to talk about. Anyways guys, let me know in the comments down below what do you think of all the news we shared today. Of course, Stern 70th Godzilla Premium. This is something that's outside of a lot of our pocketbooks in the home arcade community. We're of course used to paying like $300 to $1,000 for a home arcade product. This is something outside that realm, but I want to know your thoughts. Is this something you think or you think is cool? Would you be excited to play this on location? Or if you're a huge Godzilla fan, is this something you really had to ha have to have? On top of that, G.I. Joe, The Wrath of Cobra. Unfortunately, I won't be able to share my thoughts on the demo, but if you guys had a chance to play it, let me know what you think of The Wrath of Cobra. Is this still going to be my most anticipated game? Should it be? Based on your guys' thoughts, I want to hear the feedback. Is it a really good game? And then last but not least, Arcade 1-Up. Let me know your thoughts. Where's your interest lying with Arcade 1-Up, with the trajectory they have now? Are you still interested? Are you kind of, you know, not as interested but still willing to see where things go? Let me know in the comments down below. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. This is Michael B. The Game Genie, and I'll talk to you next time.